Uh, all right. Uh, I've been postponing this particular video log for a while. Um, main reason: getting sick. Very bad colds. What the heck? And well, for today's episode, I've got something special. Something quite serious. Uh, I might cry, so be forewarned. Um, yeah, well, as, as everyone who is watching this video should know, I'm into sexual uh, hermaphrodites, and this has affected my life quite severely. As can be expected, I guess. Um, and that's what I want to talk about. The, um, well, it really starts at the beginning, uh, years and years ago, when I was still a little, well, child, I guess. The um, first moment when it became apparent that something was going on um, was when, it, yeah, the usual time, basically, when uh, children split into the boys and the girls. And the boys are icky, and the girls are icky. And if you don't fit in one of those groups, like me, yeah, that's it's, it's it's not a nice place to be because mostly emotionally, emotionally you cannot uh, really develop normally. Around uh, when you're about five or six years old, <coughs> that's when you become one of the boys or the girls, and you're no longer just a child. As a short version. Long version is that it's the preparation with well preparation for puberty. You get a lot of emotional developments even before the physical developments of puberty. So for me that basically meant that when I was about five or six years old I did not go well with either group. So I was not a boy, I was not a girl, I was just a child. Uh, emotionally, I did not develop into either direction. And yeah, puberty hits. That's, yeah, because normally during puberty you get uh, primarily the physical changes, your body develops the secondary, the secondary uh, development uh, characteristics. Of the particular sex you belong to, and well, I got secondary <laughs> characteristics of both sexes. So I had for the male side, yeah, mostly unwanted hair growth, and yeah. I guess that's about it. Female sites, uh, limited breast growth, I started developing um, real hips. And yeah, confusing. I didn't really understand what was going on, so I just kind of ignored it. And yeah, I did try to completely remove sexuality out of my life during that time. Because I didn't understand it, I could not uh, do anything with it. So, yeah, I tried to pretend it didn't exist. Didn't work, but that's the best I could do. Uh, after puberty, well, there's not no time for it. Still not understanding. Even in early 2005, when I discovered what was going on, that I was intersex. That's, yeah, next stage basically, because then I knew what was going on. My environment kind of accepted it, except the ones who should have helped me, namely the dots, doctors, psychologists, and eventually also the Dutch politicians. Because I just had found out what was going on with that body through my own research um, and of course <laughs> having a lot of experience with this particular body of mine 
yeah, seven years. Seven years I've tried to get some kind of help from those hospitals, psychologists and such. I didn't receive any. Uh, late 2007, I did go to Germany where I had an MRI scan. <coughs> Which revealed that I was indeed, well, um, a hermaphrodite. They did see a vagina in addition to the, well, the male bits, so to speak. That was rejected in the Netherlands. And yeah, I guess I should have, looking back, I should have gone back to Germany right away and not expected the Netherlands to change. That's, yeah. The thing is, of course, that the average person in the Netherlands does respond positively to it when I explain the situation. They have never heard of insects, of course, even though. Over one in every 1,000 children is born with uh, a variation of it. So it's actually very common. Most people have it and do not realize it. Many infants receive genital surgery uh, to make them normal <laughs> short after birth. So many transsexuals are actually intersex people who got genital surgery as, a, as an infant. Because I got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Environment is not right here. I don't think there is a any country in the world where being intersex is not a liability to, to your own life and um, happiness, I guess. Anyway, seven years uh, later, <sighs> I did go back to Germany. I did have surgery there. It was uh, determined uh, during the surgery that I am indeed a hermaphrodite. I did not have any kind of fully developed uh, genitals. Um, and hopefully in a few weeks I will be officially recognized as being female here in the Netherlands. Not a very good response. Um, I am working on starting a major lawsuit against the Dutch hospitals due to their treatment of my case which basically involved um, years of brainwashing me into believing that I had to, be, had to be transsexual and that I was crazy, that I was suffering from something they made up, basically up called autoparagynacophilia <laughs> which would basically mean that I prefer to see myself as being physically female even though I'm not this of course nonsense because it was my environment which started with seeing me in that way uh, first basically during puberty already people asking me are you male? are you female? I didn't really know what the answer is that I am male because that's what my ID card said but didn't feel right so yeah big mess didn't understand any of it very confusing and yeah, the past seven years have not really helped with that. That's just the part for my intersex condition. Uh, when it comes to sexuality, I used to think that I was just a heterosexual male. Right now, I am, well, I do not think the term hetero or Intersexual actually applies to me anymore. Um, you could call me bisexual. Um, but also, in a sense, asexual because I really have major troubles with sexuality um, in general. 2006, first sexual experience getting raped by a friend. <laughs> that was Blood and Eve. Um, 2008, getting sexually assaulted, after that, um, more cases of getting sexually assaulted, abused, used, <sighs> lost count of how many times. I was naive, I did try to understand sexuality, 
but I guess sexuality without any kind of love is worthless. That's a short version of it. And I I guess part of me really wishes that I was completely asexual. So that I would not feel uh, feel this urge to make it part of my life, to make it feel normal. Because it doesn't feel normal. So yeah, I guess <laughs> the whole getting raped part is that it was it's terrible, of course. I mean, I'll never get over it. Well, the worst part definitely is how the Dutch hospitals, psychologists, and politicians, when I addressed this cause, this problem, um, responded to it <laughs> and not believing me, uh, going in against me every single time by forcing me to defend myself, uh, to defend of accusation after accusation. I just, I guess I just lost myself in their shoulder. <laughs> or at least a major part of me. Uh, so yeah. Being intersex, major part of my life. <sighs> Sexuality, major part of my life. Mostly in a negative sense. Uh, me as a person. I do try to be myself, but uh, if I had to describe myself as a person, um, just not oh, ignoring any of the of the intersex sexuality, everything, male, female. If you just throw it all away, don't just don't care about it for a moment. I guess that's well. <laughs> don't have to guess. I'm a total geek and nerd, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I love science. I love technology. I love the inherent goodness in such intellectual pursuits. Uh, because I felt that ultimately that's what it means to be human. Being human does not mean sexuality, it does not mean uh, being intersex, transsexual, um, lesb lesbian, homosexual, heterosexual, doesn't matter. In the end, being human, it's all about what's in here. Your brain, your intellect, and all of, all of the interests you, you display using it. The body, it's important. That's I really hope that back on Monday actually be happy with it and experience some of those things other people do with it. But I guess it's I guess that having lost myself in yeah, my body, basically. <laughs> it's not that important. <sighs> you don't get happiness just from your body. You don't get happiness just from sexuality. In the end, it's all about yourself, your brain, because that's what you are. <laughs> that's what I am. That's what everybody is. And I really hope that, that I can actually uh, move on and just, yeah, be in itself. <laughs> I guess it does make a bit of sense, I hope. So, yeah, 
the way I hope that it goes the next uh, weeks or months. So that I can, I finally uh, get this legal gender change that I can refer to myself officially as female as well. I never have to explain myself again when I identify myself because nobody believes that I am a guy. <laughs> Strangely enough. That would really help. That would take away part of the focus from my body and the lawsuits against the Dutch hospitals. Um, I hope to get a lot of media attention, media attention for it so that I can actually explain the situation to a worldwide audience, explain what kind of impact it has on people like me to be treated in such a way to have our human rights basically taken away. Um, basically I hope to use those seven years to make life better for myself, for others like me and everybody else with human rights with basic human rights are being trampled. It's, it's what I have to do. It's what's best for everybody. And really, anyone who has anything against that, who doesn't treat any other human being with the proper respect, they can go screw themselves. Seriously. <laughs> because they are not human. They are not human. <laughs> they are... <laughs> All these people who have hurt me, who are hurting others like me, the people who are not normal, they are not human. They are some kind of inferior species we should not be part of this society, this environment, this world. They should be used for fuel or something useful. <laughs> but judging people based on, on their looks, on their opinions, on anything, they cannot help. They're something they're born with. That's that's be that's beyond inhuman. <laughs> that's what I've learned these seven years. And I really hope that I can use all the things I've learned during this th these seven years, basically during my life so far. That I can use those experiences to really make this world a better place. And that's it, basically it's so <sighs> until next time hopefully that's theirs. <laughs>